friends, we're getting deeper into spring and whew, we're going to get those hot temperatures soon. <laughs> Maybe you've already started to get them if you're in the northern hemisphere. If you're in the southern hemisphere, this video may still be fun for you because there may be some days that you want to smell zen while you're indoors and the cold is raging outside. But for my friends in the northern hemisphere, there's nothing as awesome as a zen fragrance in the middle of the summer heat, especially on a day when you freshly showered and you just want to smell clean and put together and peaceful and calm and serene and centered. All of the things that make you feel like you have it together and you're ready to approach the world. It can be any combination of notes that give me those feelings. Sometimes it's notes that remind you of a spa. Perhaps there are some herbal notes like lavender and chamomile and eucalyptus or notes like that. It also could be tea notes. It could be some calming lactonic or creamy notes as well. So there's a wide variety. I hope you enjoy something that we talk about today. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you what's on the horizon in terms of upcoming videos. I have promised a coconut video and that's definitely coming up. I've got the list together for that and I have some really fabulous coconut fragrances to share for this year, even better in my opinion than the past few years of videos. And then I have a Luxe Summer Fragrances videos coming up, those rich opulent fragrances for summer that are just like luscious and juicy. And I also have a fresh Summer Fragrances video on the horizon. So stay tuned for those. And before we talk about the Zen fragrances, if you like this category and you have something in your collection or that you've tried that you think you'd recommend to our friends out here in YouTube fragrance land to try out, please drop that in the comments so that you all can interact with each other and see each other's recommendations as we go through. So without further ado, let us jump in with the first one on the list, which I've talked about before, Bulgari Otevert. Actually, the official name is Eau Perf Perfume Eau Tevert. So it doesn't look like I've used a lot of this, but trust me when I say I have used this a few times and sprayed it 20 times each. It, it came pretty full. And the reason that that is, is because I have to say before I even talk about this, this is a very pale light fragrance, friends. So if you like a lava fragrance that's going to stick around for a long time, maybe skip this option. But if you don't mind that, and if you're a fan of the Bulgari line, check this one out. The best way to describe this fragrance is it's got that Lux Hotel lobby smell. There's a prominent tea note in this fragrance, as well as some spicy notes, a little bit of citrus, and a little bit of musk. I would say it's a really unisex fragrance. It doesn't have any sort of feminine edges. I think it's sort of right in the middle, maybe even like a hint into the masculine territory, but a super easy wear and one that will come in handy on particularly hot days. And you can literally, literally douse yourself in this and not offend a soul, not even the most sent people that are most sensitive to fragrance uh, would be offended by this. So if you're in an office setting or in a medical setting or something like that, where you don't want your scent bubble to encroach on other people's sensibilities, maybe think about a fragrance like this. Let's go on. Next recommendation is newer to my collection. And I have to tell you, <laughs> if I could become a scent, this might be among the contenders. It reminds me very much of the smell, the aromatic herbal kind of a smell that you get when you walk into an Aveda salon. If you know, you know, that is like one of, in my opinion, the most heavenly smells anywhere, anywhere, bar none. It is Eau Dinamasante or Dinamasante uh, from Clarins. I apologize. Someone shared with me how to pronounce this and I've already forgotten, but I love that this smells incredibly herbal. It has an earthy touch without smelling dirty. Ooh, yes. So definitely has a little bit of patchouli, but I would say a clean linear patchouli. The primary scents in this fragrance are there's citrus, I think from a lemon, and there's also rosemary. Who loves rosemary? I adore rosemary. I love to scratch, squeak, rub it. That's the word. Rub it between my fingers and then smell the beauty of that herb on my fingers. So there's a strong pronounced rosemary along with some spices and some peppery notes in here. So citrus and herbs is what you get, but mostly the herbs with the background of a very linear, clean smelling patchouli fragrance. This also doesn't last very long. So just know that this is kind of one of those like douse yourself in fragrances, enjoy for a few hours and then reapply all over again. But yeah, and affordable too. This one is on fragrance net. I think I got it in the 30 ish, 40 ish dollar range, something like that. 
A category of a fragrance that reminds me very much of a beautiful spa smell that just immediately centers you and an underrated fragrance that a lot of people don't talk about. In fact, I don't really hear anybody talking about this anymore. It had a minute in the spotlight, but I think it deserves another minute or two. It is from Versace and it is The Dreamer, The Dreamer. Some people feel like this leans more heavily in the masculine direction than I, th I think it's a unisex fragrance. And for me, it has like a toe or two in the masculine direction, but very, very wearable by ladies. Absolutely. The, the best way that I can describe what this fragrance smells like is imagine a stick of spearmint gum with some gentle white florals layered over it. That's what this fragrance gives me. There is, in my opinion, a pronounced iris note. There's something in here that comes across like lavender on the nose, but I don't think there's any lavender notes listed for this. There's tarragon, artemisia, which gives it a little bit of herbal greenness to it. And I think this is just a delightful Zen smell. It's soft wearing. It gives you a nice little scent bubble. It's about a half a day-ish kind of a fragrance, maybe a little bit more, and a very easy wear and very affordable. I feel very much like if you're into the Zen category of fragrances, this one is not to be missed, or you should at least see if you can get a decant of it or get a used bottle. If you're not, you don't want to get a whole new bottle, get a used bottle on Mercari or something like that and try it out. And if you don't like it in terms of wearing it, it would I I can nearly guarantee you be fantastic as like a linen fragrance to give you that calm aura that you want as you lay yourself down to bed. A fragrance that I had a little mini of for a long time and just wasn't sure if I wanted to pull the trigger and get a full bottle because I found the fragrance to be like ever so slightly bizarre and I wasn't sure if I was ready for that level of bizarre yet. <laughs> and I wore it one night and fell in love with it or day. I don't remember like the fine details of the story, but remember thinking this is really, this is unique. I think I want to take a chance on a full bottle. And knowing me, I probably got this in a Sephora sale. The story's in some video somewhere. Not that anybody needs the story y'all, but it is from Nest and it's called Indigo, Indigo. These Nest bottles, I really enjoy the artwork on them. Not all of the Nest bottles are faves of mine. I have this and I have Sunkissed Tabiscus. And why do I think I have one more? I don't know, but I do like a number of them and I think they are worth a shot. They're unique, they're unique fragrances. So this fragrance here, it's a very, to me, heavy tea fragrance. It's spicy and it's heavy on the tea, like a spicy tea with a woodiness to it as well. There is a fig note that people really pick out of this. I don't know that I get a super pronounced fig note. I would say for the most part, it's tea and spice and woodiness to me. I, I also just think this is one of the most unique fragrances in my collection. So if you're a person who's looking not to smell like everyone else, and you have a little bit of an adventurous nose and would like to so try something a little bit out of the norm, Indigo might just be your girl. It might be your girl. So try this one out. This one has a very decent projection and can last for a decent amount of time. It'll take you through mostly a work day or so, six to eight-ish hours, something in that neighborhood. I find this to be fantastic. And the more that you sniff it, the more it becomes a little bit intoxicating because it is such an interesting scent. Newer addition to my fragrance wardrobe and one that I am getting to know even more and more and enjoying the more and more that I try it. It takes on a different life every time that I wear it and it keeps me guessing that way. It is Phantasma from Liquid Imagineers or Liquidy Imag... Whatever. <laughs> I was trying to say the name. Can I just, can we just go with liquid imaginaire? So the way that I would describe this fragrance is it really depends on the day that you wear it, what you have going on on your skin that day, if your skin's oily or not, there's a pronounced tea note. And I would say the last time that I worn this, I've worn this maybe, maybe three ish times at this point, uh, two full wears, if you will, and then maybe like a half wear. The most recent time that I wore it, it gave me a pronounced rice note, a rice note. So if you think about the the like powderiness that sits on top of white rice, I would say is what this gives me. And it also gives me a little bit of the steam. If you have a rice cooker, for example, when you lift the lid off and you're ready to scoop the rice out, that steaminess that comes from rice combined with the tea here. But you know, here's what I find fascinating about this fragrance and I can't figure out what in the note structure creates this and who really needs to know. I just wanna share with you, it smells metallic to me and it's a metallic that is intriguing for me and puts it in that like stainless steel cleanliness zen category for me like oh 
<laughs> I joked around when I sampled this in that, that video where I talked about what this was like when I sampled it, that it smells like the inside of a futuristic spaceship if there were some like aromatic notes being pumped in the air along with whatever metallic smells you imagine being out in the in a floating spaceship. Have I ever been in a floating spaceship? I have not. I've been to NASA and I've been to Kennedy Space Center, but no, I haven't been out in space. So what am I talking about? It's like the fantasy of what I think that would smell like. I love the name of it, Phantasma, which of course then evokes this ghostly like smell. I think this is really interesting. I don't think it is for everyone and it definitely isn't mass appealing because it's a little bit on the stranger side. But remember, you get a strong tea and rice note with mixed with some metallic notes. So if that sounds appealing to you, give this a try or get a decant of this and see what you think. Those of you that love mint tea and that brings you a sense of peace and calm, boy, do I have the fragrance for you. This is Herba Fresca from the Aqua Allegoria line from Guerlain. I probably could have talked about very many from this line. I regret that I purchased a smaller bottle of this. I did go through a chunk of it, not all of it, but a chunk of it last summer into early fall. And I wanted to feature others of this line, but you know, we got to give the different brands some shine. So this was the main one that I chose from this Aqua Allegoria line. Look, you get mint, you get tea and a little bit of citrus here. The way, the way that I adore the sense that this fragrance gives me is just like beyond. That hot summer day when you're so sticky, you can't stand yourself. You know what I'm talking about? It's humid. It's gross. All you want to do is like sleep under a fan. <laughs> this is the fragrance that you want to spritz on in the middle of that after you get out of your cold shower. You know, it's that hot that you're willing to freeze yourself in a shower to get away from the heat. One of the most realistic, beautiful mint fragrances that I have tried. It smells just like when you rub the mint in between your fingers and put your nose to it, that fresh smell alongside some tea and some light citrus. A beauty of a fragrance, not the longest lasting, but will definitely hold you down for a few hours and give you that fresh feeling. If you want that same fresh, calm feeling, but you want a little bit more substance with it, I would highly recommend getting yourself a bottle of Bubble Bath by Replica. This is one of the most luxurious soapy smells. It does smell like you just drew a fresh bath. Your bath soap smells both clean, like a soapy clean, but the soap also has some florals in it to just give it that feminine touch. There's a beautiful, absolutely beautiful coconut accord in this fragrance that makes this soap feel a little bit creamy while still being on the clean side. It's, I, I, I'm speechless. I really just adore this. It's also a tiny bit musky and has some herbal touches to it, but for the most part, you get like a floral clean slope, slope soap with a lovely creamy coconut accord. And I just, it's one of those like addicting fragrances that once you start wearing it, you can't get enough of it. The one thing I will warn about with this fragrance, it has decent longevity, not like a day to night fragrance, maybe like your work day, but it does get a little bit softer as the day goes on. So it doesn't have a ton of projection if that matters to you, but I don't care because I think it's such a fabulous fragrance. Moving along, a fragrance that belongs in a citrus video because it certainly has a lot of citrus in it and in a spicy video because it has some spiciness to it but I mostly associate with being calm and centered and in a bright way, a light and bright way. So we're not talking about like the heavy meditation. We're talking about an uplifting kind of Zen and a fragrance that was my signature scent in my probably late twenties into early thirties phase of my life. I've been through multiple bottles of ginger essence from origins. Let me also say that this has a gorgeous body souffle that accompanies it in a tub. That's a really light, fluffy, creamy souffle body butter type of a thing <laughs> that you want to maybe lay down before this if you want to increase the longevity. This is a little bit of a fleeting fragrance. It, it's bright and it's beautiful and it's calming and it's zen-like when you first spray it on. And I would say it has maybe several hours, four-ish, somewhere in that neighborhood hours of longevity, but then fades off quickly after that. You still get a little bit of a skin scent but the souffle helps it to last longer. I've been through umpteen bottles of this and just adore this. If you are a ginger fan, this is probably one of the purest ginger fragrances that you can get. It has other citruses in it like lime and I think lemon and one other, but yeah, bright, beautiful, calming, centering fragrance. 
And I've worn this all year round at points. I've worn it in the winter. I've worn it through all four seasons, but it definitely shines well in the spring and in the summer. Another one that's newer to the collection, but I have been enjoying sniffing as I've passed by and I wore it to bed one time and look forward to wearing it more this summer. It is Nomad Tea from Comme de, Comme de Garzon. Comme de Garzon, that's the, that's the pronunciation we're going with. <laughs> This is taking you back into that mint tea direction, similar to the Herba Fresca. The difference here is that this one is more substantive. This one stays a lot brighter, lighter, like up in the atmosphere. This one is a little bit more grounding in that it has a lot of greenness to it. And here's how I would describe this. If you have ever left a tea bag, maybe longer than you should have, it was steeping in your hot tea longer than the direction said, and you come back and it has almost like a hint of like bitter dirtiness to it. That's a little bit of the background of this. And it works in this fragrance to give it some depth, dimension, some substance, but it's mostly a mint and tea fragrance with a little bit of that backbone, if you will, from that like slightly earthy, dirty aspect that I think makes this a really fascinating fragrance. So I'm gonna look forward to rocking this more in the spring and summer. Uh, and it says sweet. I would say there's a hint of sweetness in here, but. I really don't think of this as being like a sugary sweet fragrance. There's a little bit of sweetness. One fragrance that I'm interested in getting the original of fairly soon, I do have a dupe of it, Sunday Morning from Alexandria Fragrances, which is a dupe of Maison Francis Kirkjean, Petite Matine. I would say that this is what I'm, I'm going to call almost like a almost leaning masculine citrus, beautiful lemon, like a sweet lemon. Imagine lemon with sugar on top and lavender is mostly what i get from here some musk as well so if that is what the original fragrance smells like which i have a decant of somewhere and can't find to compare to <laughs> right at the minute i definitely would love a full bottle in the meantime i will enjoy wearing sunday morning this summer this is a really bright crisp fresh citrusy aromatic fragrance that is bright. I'm not sure why it's called Sunday morning, except I can imagine waking up on a weekend morning and the sun's pouring through the windows and maybe you have a citrusy tea at your breakfast and you've got some marmalade laid out and some florals are nearby in a vase, some flowers are nearby in a vase. Maybe you have a little lavender sprig somewhere. I don't know, some combination of that kind of image comes to mind when I think about this fragrance. So this is super delightful. And if the Maison Francis Kirkjean one is on the expensive side for you, here is a great dupe at like 30 some odd dollars or so. In the same family as Petite Matine, but a little bit more substantive, a little thicker of a fragrance, the beautiful virgin mint from Carolina Herrera. I love the extreme freshness of this fragrance. The primary players here are a bright, crisp, like pure mint scent along with a citrusy feel. And what gives it some more substance is that it has a significant amount of musk that shines through as well in this fragrance. I wouldn't consider it a musky fragrance, but I would just say that the musk really helps the other players sort of shine and or depending on how you think about it, kind of surrounds the mint and citrus notes to cocoon them in something that provides some depth and weight. I hope that made some kind of sense, but <laughs> that's my description of this for now. It's very fresh, very delightful. I would say this has pretty good projection when you first apply it. It gets a little bit calmer over time and it has moderate longevity. Like with most citrus types of fragrances, it's not gonna last you for forever. Although I suspect that the musky aspects of this give this a little bit more longevity than your typical citrus fragrances. And I mean, this whole Carolina Herrera bottle line is fantastic. As you know, I have many of the Parfum ones and this is the EDT line from the EDT line, the ones that are tall and thin like this and the Parfum ones are shorter and squatter and more opaque in nature. Oh, gorgeous fragrance. I realize this is getting a little bit repetitive, but I have one more tea and citrus fragrance to share that's very affordable that I've talked about recently. It's a new purchase, Aqua Colonia, I'm sorry, 4711 Aqua Colonia Green Tea and Bergamot. There's, I picked up about five of these and there's some similarities between them in that they're all bright and light and fresh fragrances. This one in particular is exactly what it says. It has a pronounced bright tea note and some beautiful citrus that accompanies this. I would say of the ones that I've shared, this one is maybe the thinnest in terms of texture and the lightest and another one that would be great for after shower on a super hot day when you want it to smell fresh and clean and bright and calm. You want that calmness from the 
tea aspect of this really neat fragrance then a fragrance that i have absolutely come to adore stole my heart when i purchased it and made it into my top 10 for life this past year i do a top 10 i've started to do a top 10 at the end of every year and this is the absolutely phenomenal Shunquan from Zerjoff. Maybe the best Zerjoff in my collection. Do I have a lot of Zerjoffs? I think I have maybe five or six. So, I mean, I'm not like a Zerjoff queen or anything like that, but I've collected a few more of the ones that I like. I don't like them all. I don't like some of the hype fragrances that everyone else loves from Zerjoff, but this one here is a hidden gem, a beauty that I brought into my collection about a year or so ago at this point and have just absolutely adored it. Forget, please, what the Fragrantica description of this says. Forget that. Those folks don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I mean, I'm acting like I know what I'm talking about, but I can only give you my impression. And I can share with you that it's nothing like what's on Fragrantica. I pick up a creamy, delicious coconut here, like a coconut milk that's thicker, not like you know, there's coconut water. I don't mean that. I mean, coconut milk, not quite as thick as like the uh, cocoa cream that you would put, say, in like a winter eggnog, not that kind of thickness, something in between there. That's so comforting and luscious, cocooning. I consider this a very cocooning fragrance, super calm, super zen. There's tea in here also. And I would say for this tea, there are some green teas. This to me is more like a breakfast tea, like an Earl Grey kind of tea or something like that. English breakfast tea. Oh my goodness. I don't know how to describe how much I adore this. There's also a vanilla a chord or note or something in here, something that gives it additional, like a touch gourmand nature. It's not a gourmand fragrance, y'all, but something in that direction. I adore this and it sits really well on my skin and makes me feel incredibly, incredibly calm. Love, love, love Shunquan. So I'm going to end this video with two fragrances that I think most people would agree probably lean a little masculine, but I think they are fantastic. I have worn them, will be wearing them again and wanted to share them with you in case you think our interests align and you have a little bit more of an adventurous nose past the usual sort of feminine fragrances that are recommended. I'm going to start off with Mancera Oud Lemon Mint, Oud Lemon Mint. So love this bottle, this ombre effect on this bottle. Doesn't look like I've used a lot because you don't need to spray a lot of Mancera. A couple of sprays of this stuff will do you. I find this to be so pretty, so calming to me. And I'm going to share with you some of the notes from the actual Mancera website, not what's on Fragrantica. Again, this is one where you may want to ignore the Fragrantica notes a little bit. Lemon, coriander, there's a little bit of a spiciness in this that, that gives this fragrance some oomph and body. Uh, black pepper, almonds. I can't say that I get a lot of almond out of this at all, but I definitely get a really beautiful, almost creamy lemon scent from this. In the heart, it says subtle oud. And I agree. I mean, for people that are not used to oud, it may seem like a little bit of a loud oud, but to me, it's a little bit more of a subdued, tolerable oud that leans more in the woody direction than in the, you know, barnyard direction, for lack of a better term. And in the middle is where you get a little bit of patchouli and that mint, that mint. But the lemon I feel like is throughout this fragrance. There's some heavier notes in the base like leather and vetiver and musk. A lot of Mancera fragrances have musk in them. And so there's definitely a musky aspect to this. Spray a little bit, not a lot, or it can become overwhelming super quickly. But if you keep it on the light side and you like lemon, you like mint, you like the idea of a soft, subtle oud, this might be an interesting one to try out and or share with your male counterparts if you are a lady who prefers a more feminine scent. But I think this is a great one. I will round this out with perhaps one of my favorite Zen fragrances. I don't know that anyone else would consider this fragrance to be appropriate for this category except me. <laughs> uh, and I don't know any other ladies who talk about this. It is Cedar and Acacia from Scents of Wood. Cedar and Acacia from Scents of Wood. If the company's still doing the same thing, you can pick out the color of the actual bottle, be it this sort of tan beigey color or black or a chocolate brown. And you can pick out, I think it's black, silver, or gold hardware, like this piece and that, if I remember correctly. I really like the whole brand a lot. There's a lot of fantastic fragrances. You probably hear most about plum and cognac, which we have as well. We have sandalwood and oak and oak and oak. 
However, this is not a sense of wood video. And there's a lot of other fabulous fragrances to try out. I've tried most of them through decants. But cedar and acacia is one of my personal favorites. My husband has his own woodier favorites. I love that this comes across to my nose very aromatic as a fragrance. Now, if you look at the Sense of Wood website, it talks about cedar wood, amber, ginger, olibanum, cinnamon, cypriol, and orris as being the primary notes that are here. And the description, feel the warmth of a sun-kissed embrace with a fragrance that embarks you on a journey of spices, fruits, and amber. I don't get amber. I don't get fruit. I do get a little bit of spiciness. And mostly I get like this kitchen aromatic sense from this. And of course, a beautiful clean wood similar to the kind of aromatic wood that you would experience in a sauna and a sauna that kind of imagine the heat from that sort of wood that's what i get out of this and there's something very spa and zen like to me about this fragrance and i feel really put together when i wear this fragrance so cedar in a cedar in acacia is a top choice for me thank you for hanging with me to talk about zen fragrances Remember to drop in the comments some of your favorite calming, peaceful, serene fragrances. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, friends.